Hello ladies and gentlemen and as always thank you for watching. Today is a special day for us. We've been kind of keeping this a secret. We have this new, well new to us, uh, semi tractor that will come in handy for multiple reasons. And coming in right here is our brand new Trail East 40 ton I couldn't have timed that any better. First bay. First bay, yes sir, just drive through please. Brand new Trail East TE 801. We'll hook her up and show everybody the functions of her later right now i'm gonna help this gentleman get unhooked and uh, look it over hello ladies and gentlemen and as always thank you for watching i know several viewers have been anxiously awaiting this video today i'm going to give you a walk around or a tour of our new truck number 17 and our new trailer t1 uh, first, a brief rundown on both. Truck 17 is a 2015 Peterbilt 379. Oh, sorry, 579. My bad. Uh, has a Cummins power horse with a 10 speed transmission behind it. Uh, we added the uh, we added a PTO, which is a power takeoff to the transmission and added a hydraulic tank. It's what they call a wet kit uh, so that you can run the hydraulics on a trailer. Uh, some people are going to ask, and it's a very valid question, why for this type of setup did we use a uh, sleeper tractor instead of a day cab? Generally, you see a day cab with a uh, tandem axle and possibly a lift axle uh, as a third axle on the back simple answer this is the truck we had uh, we've had this truck for a year or so we were going to try to sell it then we decided no we're not going to sell it we're going to put it to work so we lettered it up uh, got it decaled I, I love the way it turned out uh, personally I love the way it looks uh, so let's take a little quick walk around it does have the full studio sleeper in it it's uh, really comfortable inside with a fridge and everything. Had it all cleaned up, but when I brought it up the hill here and turned it around, it got all dusty. The fan, the engine fan kicked up all the dust when I turned around up here. Uh, has the heavy rear ends. Here's the uh, hydraulic tank that I was talking about. Here's the hydraulic hoses uh, that power the hydraulics for the trailer that I'll show you in just a bit. Uh, got a broom and a shovel back here. There's a lot of things that we're gonna add as we go along. This it, We've got a lot of the basics. We've got some uh, uh, skis, cones, uh, height stick, just some basic stuff that we need, wood blocks, pry bars, uh, all that in the truck itself I'll come up and show you a little bit inside the cab uh, the cab it's pretty nice actually really really like this cab setup I'll turn around and I'll show you a little bit of the uh, uh, bunk area has a double bunk and as you can see we've got road cones and some straps and our just some minor stuff there has closets and a refrigerator which uh, I used to have in uh, one of the uh, 7035s that I used to run long before we had the rotator and I I kind of miss having a bunk but uh, I really have learned to uh, like this truck we've already been using it some and I'll add a few pictures in here 
uh, maybe a few short video clips of some jobs that we've done with it. Uh, and then obviously I'll start doing some videos of some of the jobs that we do using this truck. Uh, here's the power takeoff switch that we added. I'll go ahead and uh, flip the PTO on. We added the power takeoff, which like I said, uh, powers the hydraulic system off of the transmission as a PTO, power take off. And it drives a hydraulic pump that's attached to the hydraulic tank. We have the indicator light there that lets us know the power is on and the PTO is engaged. Uh, the dash cluster has all the controls on the steering wheel, which the even the rotator, the 389, doesn't have. Uh, really like this truck it's a nice truck all right so now on back to the trailer that's about about all I can show you on the powerhouse unit because of uh, yeah let's see 579 I messed up my bad I'm used to a 379 is what I had with the 7035 okay up here we have two storage compartments on this side we just happen to have our load binders on the opposite side, we have our chains. Has a 20,000 pound winch. We do have a uh, heavy snatch block under the bunk. We've got all kind of extra straps and everything. Uh, we had the D-rings, front D-rings added uh, for tie back points or tie downs as well. All right, now, whenever I engaged the PTO on this, I left the parking brakes released. You can do it two ways. You can either set the parking brakes and you have this button that you can push in and it will release the brakes on the trailer so that they'll slide. Let me start at the beginning. This is a brand new 2020 model Trail Ease TE801 traveling axle ramp trailer. Uh, most people in the industry call this a uh, float. Uh, that's just, just the industry term for this style of trailer, it's called a float trailer. Uh, with this one, we also included, since we bought it brand new, we decided we're gonna go ahead and do it the right way. We included a full function remote, uh, which includes the sliding axles, the bed, and the winch functions, uh, which I'll show you those right now. I didn't, well, let me idle up the uh, engine. It runs a little quicker. cruise idle it up all right power up the remote and here we go axles forward the axles will come up quite a ways they'll come up to the center graphics in front of the Midwest truck still all remote control it does have manual controls as well uh, but we ordered the uh, the remote control functions see how far the axles come up all right they're at their full forward position right now like i said uh, about where the center graphics are right in front of the midwest and then you have the parallel link system here for when you raise and lower the bed. Shows that right here, and then you can see the tail is coming down. Allows for a very, very low approach angle with no breakover. That's one of the reasons we went with this style of trailer versus, say, a uh, hydraulic tail or something like this. Uh, if I remember correctly, it allows you about a six degree load angle, which is absolutely amazing. Uh, we've already moved quite a bit of stuff on this. Uh, the main deck is 41 foot six inches. So we can get quite a bit of equipment on there. The upper deck is, uh, uh, I wanna say nine foot. 
We ordered it also with the extra center tie downs. So we have multiple tie downs and stake pockets along each side and down the center. We did order the Apatong deck uh, rather than a solid steel, partially for weight, but uh, walk up here and you see you have a nice smooth transition to this upper deck. No breakover for when you get a track to machine or something. Uh, that breakover can be very, very dangerous. Nice view of the Mississippi River. That's actually an old rock quarry down here. Well, still an operational rock quarry, but the part where this uh, water is here that is the uh, non-active part that is filled in with the river water. It's actually a bluish green. Then there's the Mississippi River and Illinois on the other side of the river. I don't know, you can almost see the Cape Bill Emerson Memorial Bridge in the distance, but it's a little bit too dark. Anyhow, this is a full 53 foot length trailer. We're still learning. I'm always learning. I don't know everything, don't claim to know everything, but really, really, really think that this trailer is going to be, truck and trailer, it's going to be a very valuable asset to our fleet. I'll show folding it up from a different angle. Also, you can, uh, I'm not gonna do it here because I'm on a, a downhill grade and I don't have the trailer brakes locked, but the front of the trailer will come up more in case you have a piece of equipment that's not running. It helps you get a greater dump angle. Uh, but for now, I'm just gonna bring it down because I don't wanna risk lifting the uh, drive tires off the ground. But there, the trailer's leveling back out. It's level in the uh, loaded position. Now, while it's in this position, I wanna show you something. And I've had to use this several times already. A lot of people in the industry already know this, but uh, for most of my viewers, they may, may, may or may not. You can travel short distances uh, with the axle slid in the forward position to maneuver into and out of tight locations. And I have had to do that to make uh, residential deliveries or, uh, I mean, I had one over the weekend that was an emergency hazmat delivery. I had a Mini X and a uh, skid steer on here. Uh, wasn't, uh, it was more weight than our rollback could handle and they needed both pieces of equipment there then. So I just took this, grabbed it. It was on a county road, single lane, narrow county road uh, with no room to turn around hardly. I slid the axles forward, jacked it around. Uh, thankfully the hazmat crew that was on site uh, helped watch me because there was a uh, ditch on one side and just a small lane to back into and I jacked it back in, pulled forward, jacked it one more time, finished pulling it around, then uh, got out and slid the axles back like we're getting ready to do now. Axles coming back to their normal ride position. Uh, this is a tandem axle, 40 ton capacity trailer. They do make a, a tri-axle version of this as well. We went with the tandem. But full LED light package. As you can see, the aluminum alcohol wheels. a lot of travel on that axle assembly. A lot of travel. There it is, all the way back. All right, ladies and gentlemen, there she is, a brief overview of it. Uh, hopefully we'll get to see it in use a lot on the videos. Uh, as if you've got questions, I'll try to answer some of the questions in the uh, uh, description, video description, hopefully. Uh, but if you've got other questions about the truck or the trailer, please feel free to ask. As always, thank you for watching and God bless.